Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are in the world right now, thank you for tuning in. So today is going to be a quick little demo. Uh, it's going to be probably a two part, probably maybe even three parts possible, but I'm trying to keep them as short and sharp as I can. But uh, as you can see, it's going to be about using Z spheres in ZBrush to get a quick block out of your creature or character. So uh, tune in. So the first step is obviously start a new project, start a Z-Sphere project, and then just start blocking out. Really early on, I recommend to just look at your concept art on a different screen or split screen and try and block it out based off of your what you see. I don't recommend tracing your character or creature straight up because you want to you want to get better as an artist. You don't want to be a copier from the start till the end. You don't want to fake it the whole way. So you want to get some kind of like, um, you know, you want to learn something along the way. So I recommend trying to block out the best you can while you're looking at your concept. This will give you one of two things. This will give you a stronger understanding of the fundamentals of your characters and your creatures. And the other thing would be that you're actually just getting better as an artist because you don't want to just create art because it looks cool. You actually want to like get good at it. So that's, that's just another key point to always take into every piece you approach. Don't rush it. Don't, you know, don't just do create something because it's going to look cool. I mean, that's okay to do that, but you know, you want to make sure that your time's used wisely when you're, when you're creating these kind of projects because they can take a while. Anyway, so enough of that. Let's jump back into what I'm doing here. So you can see how I'm actually creating the limbs and I'm playing around with the forms. I'm pulling them, I'm pulling them and pushing them like in all directions. I'm trying to break the character. I'm trying to break them to see how far I can push it as well as stick into the concept. You can see how everything that comes out from the main torso of the area starts to narrow. You want to do this because uh, it just won't make sense if you create limbs that are heavier than the, the the core of your character or creature. I mean, you can, let's say that, you know, your concept actually has that, but to be realistic and stay in the world of realism, most things will stay more balanced if, they, um, if they're heavier towards the center of their core and they narrow out. So I'm toggling through my display. I'm going through Dynamesh right now, and I'm actually seeing what it looks like when it's in its final form. You can see now that I'm actually also bringing in other objects that are re relatable to the concept that I've created. And by doing that, I'm able to see the size of my character. Because right now you've just been working in a massive 3D space where you don't know the size of your character. You don't know how it compares to other objects and stuff around it. So what I will actually do is I'll hit display um, in adaptive uh, tools and I will start to move these forms based on other objects that I can create with it. You can start adding more stuff in at this point, but I will constantly toggle this on and off and I'll go back and forward through this to just get the best result. Now, the next step I've actually done is also broken symmetry. This is okay. Most people won't do this because they create stuff to like function in video games. But for me, I'm actually creating this for concept purposes. So I actually want it to look as close to the concept as possible. And by doing this, I have to break the symmetry. Remember, while you're in Z-Sphere mode, everything's kind of non-destructible. You can play with things. You can add more forms. You can add more Z-Spheres. You can add more limbs. You can do anything in this space. So don't be afraid to just break your mesh and start adding things and, and fixing things and, and, and actually getting it perfect before you move into the next step. Because the next step is when you're going to start adding details. And when you start to add details, the only way you can go back to this situation of being in Z-Spheres is if you've saved it out before going to Dynamesh. So make sure you're ready. So you're blocking out your character or creature and you know, you're progressing pretty well, but you're starting to get to the phase where you think you're done. So first things first is obviously know where you're at in your design know when you're ready to go to the next step because as soon as you go to the next step you're going to be dynameshing your character or creature and then that's it the only way you can go back to the z spheres is if you saved a project before the dynamesh so make sure if your character is not symmetrical then start breaking into the z spheres and breaking that symmetry if your character is symmetrical or you want to model a symmetrical character then just you know keep doing what you're doing but now is when I would start to actually bring in, in that kind of uh, concept. In ZBrush, you're kind of lucky. You can go up to the top and you can drop down the opacity and then you can start tracing from the back document file. So this would be a, 
an image that's on your desktop um, and then ZBrush will be the program that's opened in front of it. Then you drop the opacity and you can just trace directly onto it. So mind you, it's not gonna line up perfectly, obviously with the Z spheres because you're limited to the shape and the forms you've got while working in this here. But do know that as you're doing Z spheres, you can add, move, twist, shake, everything as much as you can. And then when you go to Dynamesh it, you're gonna be quite surprised you know how well it's gonna look. So don't be afraid to break it a little bit. Don't be afraid to like pull those forms out and really twist and turn. All right, so congratulations as well for making it this far, listening to my voice. As you can see in the background here, I've kind of broken my Z-sphere. So I'm kind of trying to figure out why it's, uh, why it's doing what it's doing when it goes into Dynamesh mode. Uh, it's pretty simple. What happened is one Z-sphere is swallowing another Z-sphere next to it, which is actually too small. So when one is too big and one's too small, when you hit Dynamesh, the other one kind of takes that small one or that big one and it cuts it out of that mesh, which gives you a pretty pretty bad result. So I, I'm pretty sure I couldn't find out what the problem was. So I ended up just uh, settling for a Z remesher, smoothing it out, as you can see right now, and then just kind of just pulling those forms back into shape. And this is completely okay, because remember, you're in charge of it. You know what it's got to look like. Um, there's no exact method to follow. So just just get the best result you can, and then go with it. So yeah, just enjoy. I hope you take this method and just let's see what you guys create. Good luck.